Hello and thanks for watching. I am Phil Gifford from the Menzies School of Health Research, which is in Darwin in the Australian Northern Territory. Probably the most unusual aspect of this study is, is that it is based upon self-experimentation. Specifically, members of the research team deliberately contaminated their ungloved fingers with live chlamydia trachomatis. We are fairly sure that this is the first published study encompassing such an activity. Although this could appear to verge upon the comical, this was done for a serious reason. My research group is engaged in enhancing the evidence base available to service providers who must respond to instances where young children are found to be STI positive. While this is usually regarded as strongly indicative of sexual abuse, in the Northern Territory, this is a particularly challenging socio-political issue. Our approach is to estimate the probabilities of mechanisms that conceivably result in STI positive neurogenital specimens in young children in the absence of what is regarded as abuse. All mechanisms tested are of concern to frontline clinicians in the research team and have not simply been imagined by the lab-based researchers in the team. In this study, the mechanism of interest was that a parent or other carer assisting a child to provide a urine specimen for STI testing may contaminate the specimen with an STI as a result of contacting the specimen with their own fingers. Accordingly, the objective was to determine how much chlamydia trachomatis is transferred by finger contact from a chlamydia trachomatis suspension to another sample. The essence of the design was to determine the ratio between the chlamydia trachomatis load in the chlamydia suspension that is used to contaminate the fingers and the load in the specimen that is contacted by the contaminated fingers. Additional experimental detail is that we used dilution series of three chlamydia trachomatis isolates, two different methods of finger contact, and three self-experimenting participants. Also, the diluent used was an artificial urine surrogate and fingers were dried using paper towel between contact with the first and second tubes. Here are photographs of the actual published experiments in progress showing the two dipping and pouring methods of contact between urine surrogate and fingers. Here's the dipping method and here's the pouring method. The results were remarkably consistent. Chlamydia loads were measured using a qPCR based commercial diagnostic system. For the specimens that we tried to contaminate by finger contact, where chlamydia was detectable, the crossing point was always close to 10 cycles higher than the crossing point for the corresponding dilution of the chlamydia suspension. This equates to approximately 10 microliters being transferred from one tube to another by finger contact. To assess the significance of this, we examined crossing point data from actual chlamydia trachomatis positive urine specimens. 20% had sufficiently high chlamydia load that they could underpin the conversion of a specimen from chlamydia negative to chlamydia positive by the finger contact scenario that we tested. Therefore, it is not inconceivable that this could occur. In considering the translational implications of this, we note that guidelines for midstream urine collection, for example, UTI testing, do generally include precautions against contact between specimen and skin. However, guidelines for first stream urine collection for STI testing contain, contain no such precautions. We conclude that incorporating precautions against contamination into first stream urine collection guidelines may be feasible and justifiable. Thank you for listening.